Income tax 2021-2022, rental property, special situations, part number one. Get ready to get refunds to the max, diving into income tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found in Publication 527 Residential Rental Property Tax Year 2021 on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, Income Tax Formula Line 1 Income would generally have another schedule, basically an income statement with income and expenses. Expenses basically being deductions. The net then is what rolls into Line 1 Income here on the Income Tax Formula as well as eventually Page 1 of the form 1040 this is the schedule e in essence the income statement schedule the supplemental income and loss we're focused on the rental real estate so we're looking at special situations this chapter discusses some rental real estate activities that are subject to additional rules more rules is that even possible yeah it is we've got we, we can do rules forever like infinity rules so we got the condominiums here. A condominium is most often a dwelling unit in a multi-unit building, but can also take other forms such as a townhouse or garden apartment. If you own a condominium, you also own a share of the common elements such as land, lobbies, elevators, and service areas. So you can see obviously this kind of form of ownership can lead to differences or in the calculations or some complexity with regards to the taxation of it. Uh, you and other condominium owners may pay dues or assessments to a special cooperative that is organized to take care of the common elements. So you, you own the common elements, the common elements are being taken care of by the organization that, you know, a joint type of organization to take care of it. Special rules apply if you rent your condominium to others. You can deduct as rental expenses all the expenses discussed in Chapter 1 and 2. In addition, you can deduct any dues or assessments paid for maintenance of the common elements. So those common element areas are going to be kind of the different situation for, for a condominium kind of situation than uh, a rental where you owe the property outside of that situation. So you can deduct special assessments uh, you pay to condominium management cooperative for improvements. However, you may be able to recover your share of the cost of any improvement by taking depreciation. Cooperatives. If you live in a cooperative, you don't own your apartment. Instead, a corporation owns the apartment and you are a tenant stockholder in the cooperative housing corporation. So you can see again, this is another form of ownership where you've got this kind of commutal element to it, which is going to make the tax calculation uh, a little bit difficult when you're looking at a renting type of situation as compared to if you just owned it outright as like a single dwelling residence, for example. If you rent your apartment to others, you can usually deduct as rental expense all the maintenance fees you pay to the Corporative Housing Corporation. Well, that's nice. In addition to the maintenance fees paid to the Corporative Housing Corporation, you can deduct your total payment for repairs, uh, upkeep, and other rental expenses, including interest paid on a loan used to buy your stock in the cooperative. Depreciation. You will be depreciating your stock in the cooperative rather than the apartment itself. So now, because it's owned with basically the stock, now that you're going to be depreciating your ownership interest in what you actually own, the cooperative, in essence, and that being a separate entity is the thing that owns the interest. So uh, figure your depreciation deduction as follows. So how do you do that? That seems a little bit more complicated than just depreciating the purchase of the home, possibly. So figure the depreciation for all the depreciable real property owned by the cooperative. Depreciation methods are discussed in Chapter 2 of this publication, in Publication 946. We touched on that briefly. If you bought your cooperative stock after its first offering, figure the depreciable basis of this property as follows. A. Multiply your cost per share by the total number of outstanding shares. B. Add the amount figured in A any mortgage debt on the property on the date you bought the stock. C, subtract from the amount uh, figured in Part B, any mortgage debt that isn't for the depreciable real property, such as part for the land. So you got the same kind of issue, you know, with the depreciation that we're going to be applying, the amount that's going to be for land versus the amount for the building, the land not being depreciable, the building 
being uh, depreciable. Number two, subtract from the amount figured in part one any depreciation for space owned by the cooperative that can be rented but can't be lived in by the tenant stockholder. Three, divide the number of your shares of stock by the total number of shares outstanding, including any shares held by the cooperative. Four, multiply the result in two by the percent you figured in three. This is the depreciation on the stock. Your depreciation deduction for the year uh, can't be more than the part of the adjusted basis defined in Chapter 2 and the stock of the cooperative that is allocable to your rental property. Payments added to capital account. Payments, uh, payments earmarked for a capital asset or improvement. So now you've got improvements that are taking place. If it was a, if it was your own rental property that you owned outright, then you've got the question of, do I put the improvements on the books, you know, as an expense, or no? If it's an improvement, I got to categorize it basically as an asset and depreciate it. Well, now you've got the cooperative putting the improvements on. So you know, what do you do in that case? So otherwise uh, charged to the cooperative's capital account for added to the basis of your stock in the corporation. So one more time, payments earmarked for a capital asset or improvement or otherwise charged to the corporative's capital account are added to the basis of your stock in the corporation. For example, you can't deduct a payment used to pave a community parking lot. Instead, and, uh, install a new roof or pay the principal of the corporation's mortgage. Uh, treat as capital cost the amount you were assessing for capital items. This can't be more than the amount by which your payments to the corporation exceeded your share of the corporation's mortgage interest and real estate taxes. Your share of interest and taxes is the amount the corporation elected to allocate to you if it reasonably reflects those expenses for your apartment. So now you're going to have to deal with the taxes and, and you go to the corporative and say the amount that they're going to allocate you for those items that would generally be, you would think, deductions on the schedule on your rental property. So otherwise, figure your share in the following manner. So if they don't do that, then how are you going to figure it? One, divide the number of your shares of stock by the total number of shares outstanding, including any shares held by the corporation. That'll give you your percent kind of ownership, your ratio. Two, multiply the corporation's deductible interest by the number you figured in, in one. So now you've got the interest and you're going to basically try to figure your share of it. This is your share of the interest. Three, multiply the corporation's deductible taxes by the number you figured in one. So they got the total taxes deducted. You're trying to figure your share with the ratio you figured in part one. This is your share of the taxes. Property changed uh, to rental use. So now you got a property changing kind of situation that could cause some property problems. Possibly, for example, you had it as personal property, for example, and then you switched it over to rental property, which it could be a little bit more difficult to figure what the initial basis of it is, for example, as opposed to a situation where you bought the property outright that was rental property that you plan on renting, because at that point, you know what the cost was when you purchased it on a market value because you purchased it on the market. So if you change your home or other property or a part of it to rental use at any time other than the beginning of your tax year, you must divide yearly expenses such as taxes, insurance between rental use and personal use. So normally when you change the use of a property, it would be nice if you could do it basically by the beginning of the year. So you have a full year of use of rental property versus personal property. But if you don't do that, then you've got to, you've got to deal with this allocation, another kind of ratio calculation you would think between the portion of the year which was rental versus personal usage. So you can deduct as rental expenses only the part of the expense that is for the part of the year the property was used was used or held for rental purposes. So you can't deduct you know rental expenses for the whole year for something that for part of the year was personal purposes. And so you're gonna have to find some method to be allocating between the personal and the rental fractions of the year. You can't deduct appreciation or insurance for the part of the year the property was held for personal use. So you can't depreciate a whole year's worth of property if you didn't use it for the whole year. So however, you can include the home mortgage interest, mortgage insurance premiums, and real estate taxes for the part of the year the property was held for personal use when figuring amount you can deduct on Schedule A. 
So when you're talking about personal property, possibly your principal residence, for example, that then was converted to rental property, you often have the capacity to deduct something on the Schedule A. Remember the general rule here for deductions for an income tax in general would be that you would think you would only get deductions if you had to expend the money to generate revenue so that the income tax was not placed on gross income, but rather net income. That seems like the fair thing to do just in general. And that's basically what happens on the Schedule E because it's basically a business. So that means that the ordinary and necessary kind of expenses, those expenses that you needed in order to generate the rental income would be the types of things you would expect to be deductible. But on the personal side, we've got those added types of things and some of the big added types of things that don't really follow that, that general rule are, are itemized deductions, big ones being the mortgage interest. So if you can't, if it was your principal residence, you might still be able to deduct the mortgage interest if you're itemizing, if your itemized deductions are greater than the standard deduction. So now you've got this allocation between the portion of the year that was rental versus the portion that was personal, still possibly being able to deduct some of that and taxes, including property taxes, which again, it's a little kind of unusual that taxes, you know, personal taxes are deductible, but they're deductible on the Schedule A. So if you can deduct them on the Schedule E when it's rental property, and you might be able to deduct them on Schedule A when it was personal property, if the property was both personal and business at some point throughout the year. So example, let's take a look at an example, shall we? Your tax year, uh, your tax year is the calendar year. That's January through December. You moved from your home in May and started renting it out in June 1st. Uh, you may deduct as rental expenses seven twelfths of your yearly expenses sheds, such as taxes and insurance. So if we pull out the trustee calculator, it's not a difficult ratio calculation to make. We got seven, seven twelfths that we can deduct because seven months for rental and there's 12 in the year. So that would mean seven twelfths there. So that's going to be the 58.33%, for example. Starting with June, you can deduct as rental expenses the amount you paid for its, uh, its generally billed monthly, such as utilities. So utilities are not something you can deduct on a Schedule A if it was personal, but can deduct possibly for the rental half. When figuring depreciation, treat the property as placed in service on June. So, so then if you're talking about the personal stuff that you might still be able to deduct on the personal side, if you had seven twelfths, right? If you had 12 months minus the seven for the months that were the personal use five out of 12, then you've got the 41.66, or you can think of it as seven divided by 12 is the 58 minus one is the 41.66 for those expenses that might be able to be deducted either on the Schedule A or the Schedule E, depending on if it be rental property or personal property. And those would be like the mortgage interest and possibly the property taxes. Basis of property changed to rental use. When you change property, you held for personal use to rental use. For example, you rent of your former home, the basis for depreciation will be the lesser of the fair market value or adjusted basis on the date of conversion. So this becomes a problem because how do we know what the cost of the property is? On a market basis, we know that when there's a market exchange, when the property is sold, if you bought the property, you'd have two uh, like people that are on the market that don't have joint interest because we're not related in that event. That would also cause problems. And they have uh, they have interests that are counter to each other, and that's why the price is, is usually a valid price in an arm's length transaction. But if you bought the property 10 years ago, then it could have gone up or down in value over that point in time. Note that what we would like to do on the personal side is, is be able to, to convert the property to rental property with the highest basis we could, because the higher the basis, the more benefit we're going to be able to get with regards to the the depreciation so so or and or when we sell it we're going to get a benefit now if it's personal property you got to know what the basis is because when you eventually sell it that's when it comes into play because then you got the sales price minus the the adjusted basis or whatever is going to be the gain or loss which even then 
might not be a big deal for most people because there's a huge exemption with your principal residence that could wipe out you know the gain in in essence uh at that point but when you convert it to if it was rental property the basis is going to be quite important because that's going to be one of the big kind of things that you're going to get for the depreciation so the basis for depreciation will be the lesser of which isn't the way we would like it to be going but the lesser of the fair market value of the adjusted basis on the date of the conversion so the lesser of the fair market value or the adjusted basis so fair market value what does that mean this is the price price at which the property would change hands between a willing buyer and willing seller how in the world would you ever figure that out because every piece of property is unique well you got to get an possibly get an appraisal or try to estimate it in some way and of course there could be some margin that those estimates can sw you know could swing from one side to the other that's the problem with the real estate and they can swing quite a lot if you're talking about expensive pieces of property in terms of what you're estimating the market value to be could be quite different than if you actually put that unique piece of property on the market to sell it but in any case neither having to buy nor sell or both having reasonable knowledge of all the all the facts sales of similar property on or about the same date may be helpful to figure the fair market value of the property so figure the basis the basis for depreciation is the lesser of the fair market value of the property on the date you, you changed it to rental use or your adjusted basis on the date of the change that is your original cost or other basis of the property plus the cost of permanent additions or improvements since you acquired it minus deductions for any casualty or theft losses claimed on earlier years income tax returns and other decreases to basis so meaning if you had the personal property and you made improvements to it that would increase it uh, this is kind of difficult sometimes because sometimes people don't keep as formal records as they should on the personal property because it, it's not as you're not writing off the depreciation on it each year and you might have a huge exemption so people are kind of doing what they're doing and possibly not tracking it and you're not putting it on tax returns or anything like that so you got to kind of figure that out uh what the you know what the basis of the property is and what improvements you had and so on and so forth so for other increases and decreases to basis you can see adjusted basis in chapter two so example let's do an example that'll help you you originally built a house for 140,000 I built it with my own two hands on a lot that cost 14,000 which you used uh, as your home for many years so that's going to be the original uh, price that we had for it and then before changing the property to rental use this year you added 28,000 of permanent improvements so I built those I built like a whole new a whole new like second floor on it too with my own with my hammer so of improvements to the house and you claimed a 3,500 casualty loss deduction for for damage to the house part of the improvements qualify for a $500 residential energy credit which you claim on your prior year tax return because land isn't depreciable you can only deduct the cost of the house when figuring the basis so the land is the dirt you can't depreciate the dirt so only the land because it goes down I mean only the building because it goes down in value so the adjusted basis in the house at the time of the change uh was 164,000 that's 140,000 that's the original one that I built with my own two hands plus the 28,000 notice we didn't add the 14,000 we got the 28,000 that's the improvement that's that second floor that I built with my hammer minus the 3,500 which was the amount that was claimed here and minus the 500 so on that on the date of the change in use your property had a fair market value of 168 so and that you might have taken an appraisal for example and tried to determine the fair market value and it's 168 uh, of which 21,000 was for the land and 147,000 was for the house now notice when you take the appraisal they're, they're probably not you know you can only see what they're selling for and then you got to further calculate the ratio then on the land versus the house breaking out the basis for the depreciation on the house is the fair market value on the date of the change 147,000 uh, because it is less than the adjusted basis of 164,000 so we have the 147 versus the 164 we had to take uh the lesser of the two which is again not what we would like to do I'd like to take the bigger one because then we get more depreciation for it 
and that would be better. But no, but no, corporatives. If you change uh, your corporative apartment to a rental use, figure your allowable depreciation as explained earlier. Depreciation methods are discussed in Chapter 2 of this publication and Publication 946. The basis of all the depreciation real property owned by the Corporative Housing Corporation is the smaller of the following amounts. The fair market value of the property on the date you change your apartment to rental use. This is considered to be the same as the corporation's adjusted basis minus straight line depreciation unless this value is unrealistic. The corporation's adjusted basis in the property on that date don't subtract depreciation when figuring the corporation's adjusted basis. If you bought the stock after its first offer in the corporation's adjusted basis in the property is the amount figured in one under depreciation under corporatives near the beginning of this chapter, the fair market value of the property is considered to be the same as the corporation's adjusted basis figured in this way minus straight line depreciation unless the value is unrealistic. Figuring the depreciation deduction. To figure the deduction, use the depreciation system in effect when you convert your residence to rental use. So now you got to go through the depreciation methods that you're going to be using. And at this point in time, generally, that will be the makers for any conversion after 1986. We talked about makers a bit in the past. Treat the property as a place in service on the conversion date. Example, you converted residence, see previous example, uh, under figuring the basis was available for rent on August 1st. Using table 22D, uh, see chapter 2. So we talked about the tables earlier in these in the makers depreciation. The percent for year one beginning in August is 1.364, and the depreciation deduction for year one is 2005, which is 147,000 times 0.01364.